Hello everyone, and welcome back to the module focused on exploring the structure and bonding in organometallic compounds. In today's lecture, we will delve into the concept of the 18-electron rule and the methods of valence electron counting in transition metal complexes. Most of reactions presented in this lecture series proceed in the coordination sphere of a transition metal, and it is the precise electronic nature of the metal that determines the course and the outcome of these reactions. A very clear view of the nature of the metal is critical to an understanding of its reactivity. The main features of interest are the oxidation state of the metal, the number of d-electrons on the metal and the oxidation state under consideration, the coordination number of the metal, and the availability of vacant coordination sites on the metal. The simple formalisms presented in this lecture permit the easy determination of each of these characteristics. Just as organic compounds follow the octet or 8-valence electron rule, typical organometallic compounds tend to follow the 18-electron rule. This is also known as the noble gas or effective atomic number rule because the metals in an 18-electron complex achieve the noble gas configuration. For example, in the Werner complexes, the cobalt has the same effective atomic number as krypton, meaning it has the same number of electrons as the rare gas. We first discuss the covalent electron counting model that is the most appropriate one for compounds with predominant covalency, such as most organometallics. To show how to count valence electrons by forming a compound from the neutral atomic components, we first apply the method to methane, where the simpler octet rule applies. An octet is appropriate for carbon, where 1,2s and 3,2p orbitals make up the valence shell, 8 electrons fill all 4 orbitals. The 18-electron rule, followed by many transition metal compounds, is justified on the ligand field model by the presence of 9 orbitals, 5d orbitals, 3p orbitals along with a single s orbital. A simple 18-electron case is shown in here on the instance of potassium nonahydridorenate. The net ionic charge of minus 2 needs to be considered along with the 9 hydride ligands. The two electrons added for the minus 2 charge came from forming the counterions. Note that X-type ligands in the covalent electron counting model are considered as one electron donors. Other anionic X-type ligands that also provide one electron to the metal on forming a covalent bond include methyl anion, chloride, etc. A neutral L-type ligand, such as ammonia, contributes its two lone pair electrons to the metal on binding as it is demonstrated for this Werner complex. The net plus three ionic charge requires subtracting three electrons from the count. These electrons are transferred to the anions, which are not shown here. This table shows how most first-row carbonyls follow the 18-electron rule. Each metal contributes the same number of electrons as its group number, and each carbon monoxide contributes two electrons from its lone pair. Backbonding makes no difference to the electron count for the metal. The free atom already had the pairs of d-electrons destined for backbonding. In the complex, it still has them, now delocalized over metal and ligands. Where the metal starts with an odd number of electrons, we can never reach 18 just by adding two electron ligands, such as carbon monoxide. Each carbonyl complex resolves this problem in a different way. Vanadium hexacarbonyl is stable in spite of being 17 electron, but it is easily reduced to the 18 electron anion. The 17 electron reactive transient manganese pentacarbonyl is not isolable but instead dimerizes to the stable 18 electron dimer as a 5 coordinate monomer. There is more space available to make the metal metal bond than in vanadium hexacarbonyl. This dimerization completes the noble gas configuration for each metal because the unpaired electron in each fragment is shared with the other in forming the metal metal bond. Much as the 7 electron methyl radical dimerizes to give the 8 electron compound, ethane. In the 17 electron reactive fragment cobalt tetracarbonyl, dimerization also takes place to form a metal metal bond but a pair of carbon monoxide ligands also bridge. The electron count is unchanged whether the carbon monoxides are terminal or bridging because it is a two-electron ligand to the cluster in either case. On the conventional model, a ketone-like bridging carbon monoxide gives one electron to each metal, so a metal-metal bond is still required to attain 18 electrons. The even-electron metals can achieve 18 electrons without metal-metal bond formation, and in each case, they do so by binding the appropriate number of L-type ligands. An older counting convention based on the ionic model was developed early in the 20th century for classical Werner coordination compounds because of their more ionic bonding. The final count, deconfiguration, and oxidation state is always the same for any given complex on either model, only the counting method differs. 
people invoke one or other model without identification, so we must be able to deduce their choice from the context. Neutral L-type ligands pose no problem because they are always two electron donors on either model, but X-type ligands are treated differently. In the ionic model, each metal X bond is considered as arising from metal plus and X minus ions. To return to our organic example, whether we count octet and tetrachloromethane by the covalent model from the atoms or the ionic model from the ions, we get the same result. Applying the ionic model to the case of potassium nonahydrodorinate gives a result similar to that seen in the covalent electron counting model. This table shows common ligands and their electron counts on both models. Neutral L-type ligands are always two electron ligands on either model, whether they are lone pair donors, such as carbon monoxide or phosphines, pi bond donors, such as ethylene, or sigma bond donors, such as hydrogen gas. Anionic X-type ligands, such as hydride, chloride, or methyl anion, are one electron atoms or groups on the covalent model, but two electron ions on the ionic model. On the covalent model, a one electron X radical bonds to a neutral metal atom. On the ionic model, a two electron X anion bonds to a metal cation. Parkin and Green have developed a useful extension of this nomenclature by which more complicated ligands can be classified. For example, benzene can be considered as a combination of three alkene ligands, and therefore as three L type ligands. Likewise, the eta 3 allo group is a combination of a carbon-carbon double bond and an alkyl anion, so it can be considered as mixed LX-type ligand. The electron count of a eta 3 allo sometimes simply called a pi allo, is three electrons on the covalent model and four electrons on the ionic model, as suggested by the LX label. The Greek letter kappa is normally used instead of eta when describing ligands that bind via non-contiguous atoms, such as a chelating kappa-2 acetate in this rhodium complex. As you can remember from the previous lecture, ligands that bridge are indicated by the prefix mu. For monoanions like chloride, thioalkoxide, or alkoxide in related cases, two separate two-electron, two-center metal ligand bonds can be formed, each involving a distinct pair of electrons. For these, we can write a structure such as in which the electron count for each metal is treated separately. For the metal on the left, we consider the bridging ligand as an X-type ligand. While for the metal on the right, the X-type ligand provides its lone pair as equivalent to a neutral two-electron L-type donor. In this dimer of iridium, for example, each 14-electron CP star ligated iridium reaches 18-electron by counting the bridging chlorides in this way and assigning the plus one ion charge to the right-hand iridium. For a ligand such as chloride with four lone pairs, bridging can also occur between three or even four metals leading to clusters. For a small class of ligands, such as bridging hydrogen, no lone pairs are present, and the bonding situation is different. Metal hydrogen metal bridge is best seen as involving a single two electron, three center bond that links all three centers with just two electrons. The classic case, diborane, although coming from the main group, embodies the same bonding pattern for each boron hydrogen boron bridge. Diborane can alternatively be considered as the double protonation product of the hypothetical ethylene analog shown here, where the protons add to the two lobes of the hypothetical boron-boron pi bond. A hypothetical deprotonation strategy holds for transition metals. We can count any bridged hydride by removing each hydrogen as a proton, thus converting each metal-hydrogen metal to a metal-metal bond. Now we can count the resulting hypothetical structure. 14 electron CP star iridium now reaches 18 electrons by counting three electrons for the hypothetical metal metal triple bond and assigning minus one of the two anionic charge to each iridium. Here, the bridging bonds, although shown as two separate bonds, are actually half order bonds. Ligands such as bridging methyl and bridging carbon monoxide can be considered in a similar way. Zero electron neutral ligands are a growing class. For example, tri substituted boranes, having six electron borons, complete their octet by accepting lone pairs from an L-type ligand. If the lone pair comes from an electron-rich metal, we have a metal-boron bond in which tri-substituted borane provides zero electrons to the metal and thus leaves the metal-electron count unaltered. The metal-boron bond can alternatively be written with formal charges as it is shown for these complexes of iridium. In this ligand substitution reaction, carbon monoxide leaves the complex easily due to the presence of a zero-electron ligand, which inhibits backbonding. The oxidation state of a metal is defined as the charge left on the metal atom after all ligands have been removed in their normal, closed shell, configuration, that is, with their electron pairs. The oxidation state is not a physical property of the metal, and it cannot be measured. 
It is a formalism that helps us count electrons, but no more. Typical examples are shown in here. The chemical properties of the ligands are not always consonant with the oxidation state formalism. In metal hydrides, for example, the hydride ligand is always formally considered to be H-, even though some transition metal hydrides are strong acids. Despite this, the formalism is still useful. Having assigned the oxidation state of the metal in a complex, the number of d-electrons on the metal can easily be assessed by referring to the periodic table. This figure presents the transition elements along with their d-electron count. At an oxidation state of zero, the number of d-electrons is equal to the group number of the metal. If the metal has a formal oxidation state of two, you can calculate the number of d-electrons by subtracting the oxidation state from the group number of the metal. By referring to the periodic table, the d-electron count for any transition metal in any oxidation state is easily found. The transition series is formed by the systematic filling of the d-orbitals. Note that these electron configurations differ from those presented in most elementary texts in which the 4s level is presumed to be lower in energy than the 3d and is filled first. Although this is the case for the free atom in the elemental state, these two levels are quite close in energy. For the complexes discussed in this lecture series, we do not have free metal atoms. Instead, we have metals surrounded by ligands. This means that the assumption that the outer electrons are d-electrons is a good approximation. The d-electron count is critical to an understanding of transition metal organometallic chemistry because of the 18-electron rule, which states, in mononuclear, diamagnetic complexes, the sum of the metal d-electrons plus those contributed by the ligands never exceeds 18. The 18-electron rule determines the maximum allowable number of ligands for any transition metal in any oxidation state. Compounds having the maximum allowable number of ligands, that is, having 18 electrons in the bonding shell, are said to be coordinatively saturated, that is, there are no remaining coordination sites on the metal. Complexes not having the maximum number of ligands allowed by the 18 electron rule are said to be coordinatively unsaturated, that is, they have vacant coordination sites. Since vacant sites are usually required for catalytic processes, the degree of coordination is central to many of the reactions described in this course. With all the preceding information in hand, it is now possible to consider virtually any transition metal complex, assign the oxidation state of the metal, assess the total number of electrons in the bonding shell, and decide if that complex is coordinatively saturated or unsaturated. For example, the iron complex shown here is a stable, neutral species containing two formally mononegative ligands. One of them is the propyl group, an etawan 2 electron donor X type ligand. The other is the cyclopentadienyl ligand abbreviated as CP, which is an ETA5-6 electron donor ligand. The two remining neutral carbon monoxide ligands contribute two electrons each. Since the overall complex is neutral and has two mononegative ligands, the iron must have a formal plus two charge, making it iron 2 with 6D electrons. For an overall electron count, there are six electrons from the metal, a total of four from the two carbon monoxides, two electrons from the propyl group, and six electrons from the CP group, for a grand total of 18 electrons. Thus, here we have an iron 2, D6, coordinatively saturated complex. Ions of the same D configuration show important similarities independent of the identity of the element. This means that D6 cobalt 3 complex is closer in many properties to D6 iron 2 complex than to D7 cobalt 2. Here are shown other isoelectronic transition metal complexes, which demonstrate similar properties and catalytic activity. In general, the variable valency of the transition metals leads to many cases of isoconfigurational ions, and this idea helps us predict new complexes from the existence of isoconfigurational analogs. Some isolable complexes have an electron count other than 18. Most non-18 electron structures have less than 18 electrons. Representative examples are methyl titanium trichloride with 8 electrons, dimethyl niobium trichloride with thin electrons, hexamethyl tungsten with 12 electrons, and bistriderp butyl phosphine palladium zero with 14 electrons. Much rarer are d-block complexes with more than 18 electrons. Examples include cobaltocene with 19 electrons and nickelocene with 20 electrons. For the 18 electron rule to be useful, we need to know when it will be obeyed and when not. The rule works best for small, high-field, monodentate ligands, such as hydride and carbon monoxide. Such small ligands find no difficulty in binding as many times as needed to reach 18 electrons. 
An important class of late metal complexes prefers 16 electrons to 18 electrons because one of the nine orbitals is very high-lying and usually empty. This can happen for the D8 metals of groups 8 to 11. Group 8 shows the least and group 11 the highest tendency to become 16 electron. When these metals have 16 D electrons, they normally adopt a square planar geometry, as in Wilkinson's catalyst, cisplatin, and related systems shown here. Although early transition metal complexes can have electron counts well below 18 electrons, an ambiguity often arises when the ligands have additional pi-type lone pairs that can, at least in principle, be donated into empty metal D orbitals. Remember our discussion about pi donor ligands. For example, hexamethoxy tungsten is apparently a 12 electron species, but each oxygen has two pi type lone pairs for a total of 24 additional electrons that could be donated to the metal. Almost any even electron count could therefore be assigned, and for this reason, electron counting is much less useful in discussions of early metal and D0 organometallic chemistry. Paramagnetic complexes generally do not obey the 18 electron rule but many of these have reactions in which they attain an 18-electron configuration. For example, the 19-electron ETA-5 cyclopentadienyl ETA-6-phenyl iron-1 is a powerful one-electron reductant, giving corresponding 18-electron iron-2 complex as product. Steric stabilization of otherwise reactive species is a standard strategy in organometallic chemistry. Steric bulk can permit formation of low-electron count, low-coordination number complexes, as in the isolable 14-electron bis pi allyl complex of iron-2 shown here. In this case, the bulky trimethylsilyl groups enforce a syn anticon formation that minimizes the steric clash between trimethylsilyl groups but blocks approach of additional ligands. The palladium complex presented here is an extremely useful catalyst for cross-coupling reactions. It is a relatively stable 14-electron complex as the enhanced steric bulk caused by the two triterp-butyl phosphenes limits the accessibility of palladium for other ligands. To sum it up, we have explored the 18-electron rule and delved into the covalent and ionic valence electron counting models. Our journey has encompassed understanding electron counts for common ligands in the determination of formal oxidation states of transition metals. This knowledge has empowered us to analyze electron counts and oxidation states within transition metal complexes. Furthermore, we have taken a closer look at the limitations of the 18-electron rule and the factors contributing to those limitations. As we wrap up this module, our final lecture will introduce the correlation between coordination numbers and geometry in transition metal complexes, along with insights into the effects of complexation. Thank you for your attention.